Hey students, I hope you had a good Easter break and uh, could enjoy as much of uh, being outside as you could. Um, I know I had a fun Easter break, got to go outside quite a bit. Um, <clears throat> so what we're doing this week is we're going to answer the question, what do plants eat? We touched on it last week quite a bit during photosynthesis. Um, we're going to talk about it even more this week, so kind of going in depth on that question. Um, if you have any questions about the homework, remember, feel free to send me an email. Um, we are going to have an open Google Meet meeting um, from 11 to 12 uh, tomorrow, Wednesday. Um, so here's the intro to the lesson for today. What do plants eat? And we're going to start out by watching a quick video. So you might be thinking that plants eat dirt, right? That's what lots of people assume is true. And that's a perfectly logical thing to think. I mean, plants grow in dirt, or what in scientific language we often call soil instead. So that's what I'll call it from now on. Plants have their roots in the soil. So maybe the roots are eating that soil. For hundreds of years, this is even what scientists assumed to be true. Plants must be eating soil, they thought. They assumed that soil was where plants get their weight from. But no one had ever actually checked to see if this was true. Eventually, one scientist, this guy, got really curious about this. He wondered, are we sure that plants eat soil? And he came up with a very clever experiment, which he hoped would help him solve the mystery. Here was his idea. He decided that he would plant a young tree in a pot. Now, before doing that, he would carefully weigh the tree and the soil that he was going to place into the pot. The tree weighed about two pounds, the soil about 200 pounds. After weighing and planting the tree, he watered it and made sure that it got all the sunlight it needed too. A few years later, once the tree had grown to be bigger like this, he took it out of the pot again and measured the weight of the tree and then the weight of the soil. Do you see his idea here? Remember, the original weight of the tree was about two pounds and the original weight of the soil about 200 pounds. After the tree had grown, the tree now weighed about 160 pounds. So the tree had gained a huge amount of weight. But now what about the soil? If the tree had been eating the soil, if soil is a tree's food, then what do you think he would discover when he went to weigh the soil? So he asks a good question. Uh, is a tree eating the soil? So is any of that weight going to change from the soil? Did the tree gain um, 158 pounds from the soil or did it get it from somewhere else? We're going to watch another video to see where this tree is getting all of its weight. After five years, once his small tree had grown and gained weight, he carefully took it out of the pot, he weighed the tree, and he weighed the soil. The tree weighed 160 pounds. It had gained a lot of weight compared to the two pounds it started at. But to his amazement, the soil had barely changed in weight. It started at 200 pounds and now was only just 199.8 pounds. It lost almost nothing, just the tiniest amount. So that 158 pounds of new tree, it couldn't have come from the soil. The scientist Van Helmont was convinced. Plants don't get most of their weight from soil. His experiment showed it. Mystery solved. Sort of. Because think about it. If plants aren't getting the weight from soil, we still haven't solved where they do get their weight from. Van Helmont thought about this. Now, the only thing he knew he'd added to his young tree during those five years of its growth were sunlight and water. Now, he knew that even though all plants need sunlight, sunlight itself wasn't adding any weight to the plant. Sunlight's a form of energy. It's not a material. Scientists today know that plants use sunlight for their energy, but they're not made of sunlight. Sunlight doesn't weigh anything. So that just leaves water. If you cut open a plant, even if you cut open a tree, you can feel some wetness. So there's evidence that water is part of a plant. The scientists who did this thought, well, maybe plants somehow create their weight just from the water they take in. Or to put it another way, he thought, aha, so maybe plants don't eat, they just drink. But Van Helmont could only think this, because there was something he didn't know yet. He didn't know that there's another material that plants take in, besides just water. Much later than his lifetime, scientists using microscopes discovered something very interesting on the underside of plants' leaves. 
it looks like this. They look like little microscopic mouths. And they act like them too. They're even able to open and close. Scientists decided to call them stomata, from the Greek word for mouth. But what on earth are these little mouths on the underside of leaves doing? Could they be taking something in, adding weight to the plant? In fact, scientists were able to figure out that the stomata are taking in air from around the plant. And not just some air, lots of air, all day long. So some scientists did experiments trying to stop the plant from getting air by covering up the stomata. And they found out that when they did this, the plant would die in a matter of days. So it must have been that the plants were doing something with that air that was coming in through the stomata. Could it be that air is an important food used by plants in order to help them grow? Now, the problem is, air is about as light a thing as you can imagine. Is there really any way that plants like General Sherman, which weighs 4 million pounds, could be gaining in weight because of air it's taking in through its leaves? What do you think? I next video we're going to watch is um, testing to see if air has mass, right? So we're, we want to see if all this weight that these plants are gaining, um, if it's not from the dirt, right, that scientists did an experiment, the dirt weight didn't change very much at all. Where is this weight coming from? We want to see if the air has mass. So our next video is going to be showing whether or not air has weight, right? That's how we measure mass. For the next couple of videos, I'm going to show you the setup for um, a lab that we could have done in school, but unfortunately due to COVID, we're going to do it uh, through this video. Um, it's going to show you how you set it up, and then we're going to watch someone perform it um, on a YouTube video. So hang in there, uh, watch the next couple of videos. Here's an idea we had. We'll put balloons filled with air on each end of the balance scale and we'll make sure that we have the same number on each end. Then we'll let air out of all the balloons on one end and see what happens. Are you ready? If you're gonna do the experiment our way, go to the next step. Okay, so here's a video of this um, uh, lab in action. So you can see here that there is um, a beam here, a little dowel that they've attached two balloons to. It's completely balanced. Um, so if one balloon, if the balloons have weight, the air has weight, if you pop the balloon, the balloon with air still in it should pull everything down. So let's see what happens. So you can see after a few examples here that um, every time they pop the balloon, the other balloon that has air in it pulls down the system, right? There's more weight pulling on the system, so it uh, goes out of equilibrium. It pulls down on the system. Uh, if the air didn't have weight, it would still stay balanced, okay? So air has weight. Um, if you look at the photosynthesis notes again, I'll pull them up right now. Look at the photosynthesis notes again. We know we need uh, light energy from the sun, right? That's where plants get their energy, but ener energy doesn't weigh anything. All this mass from that the plant is gaining is from water and it's from carbon dioxide. We know earlier in uh, our units from fifth grade that uh, anything that has mass and volume is matter. We know carbon dioxide is matter, so it has to have mass. Um, so your plants are eating, in quotes, eating carbon dioxide and drinking water and adding sunlight to make their sugars, which is their food. Okay, so they're turning sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide uh, into sugar and oxygen. And that is photosynthesis. That is what plants eat. Class. So to answer the question for this lesson, what do plants eat? We know from last week's unit on photosynthesis and uh, this week's demonstration on the mass of air that plants eat, you know, in quotations eat, they turn uh, CO2, which is air, plus water, plus sunlight, which doesn't weigh anything. Sunlight doesn't weigh anything. 
uh, into sugar and oxygen. So our weight or what the plants eat is um, air and water and none of that um, is the soil itself. There's water that's held in the soil but it's not the soil, right? So plants are not eating the soil, they're eating the air and the water and the sunlight and turning it into sugars which they use for food, okay? Um, if you guys have any questions this week, um, feel free to shoot me an email. Tomorrow I am having uh, an open Google Meet from 11 to 12, so 11 a.m. to 12 p.m., so 11 to noon. Um, I'm going to send out an invite. You guys can accept it and hop on if you have any questions or if you just want to say hi. Uh, you definitely don't have to, but I'd love to see you guys again. Um, so I hope you guys have a great rest of your week, um, and make sure you're turning in your science work on Friday. So check your Google Classroom assignment to see what you need to turn in on Friday.